I'm gonna go with wild testing, wild testing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Tuesday night, Dim Racing, Alanar, TVT. Oh dear, no dear, Alton is here, is where I'm gonna go for it. And holy crap, I'm actually um, using some poetic wording there just to keep it a bit fun and exciting. Welcome to everyone on the stream. I see plenty of names there. And again, shoo, 
Let's have a look at it. Ashley, JJ, Duncan, James, Alan, Tintin, Quarantino, my man, Mr. TT, M3 Supercharged. That's probably here to go and give a big supporting. Um, supporting love for the PDWSR boys. So again, boys, um, welcome to tonight. Uh, this is going to be quite eventful, I might add. Um, oh, let me just see if I can get this green light. Sorry, I would like to just get this right. There we go. A bit of tweaks here and there. <laughs> a couple of administrations up and down. Um, we, we got about a good 40 car grid at the moment on Alton Park in GT3s and um, I must be losing my mind at the moment because I just cannot imagine that we are doing this. Like it's, oh, it's, it's kind of like almost my worst nightmare followed by one of those that I probably wish I was never born scenario things. Um, on track at the present stage, we've got two sessions of qualifying that's going to kick it off this evening. And I think we, we, we've practically just done that so that we can create a bit of gap uh, between the guys so that they can set their fastest lap times down um, as best as possible. And, and, and I do hope that, that we do get it right. So the first 10 minutes of qualifying is all just up to the AM class, boys. As you can see, Holtzhausen there in the mix. Robson, Dupria, the Scruton, Neville, Wilson, Strauss, Duplessis, and then of course Dupria. So, ah, uh, and then Jay van der So today I'm going to get a nice opportunity to actually showcase some of the AM boys. Uh, at first hand, Ooh. as I immediately move over to Gary van Aharde, who got involved in an incident with a fellow racing driver, and that, that's, that's probably not, not the best thing to do at this moment, is, is get into incidents when you are on your qualifying lap. Nonetheless, let, let's go back to the action. Here we have C van der Berg, Kel van der Berg, car 23. Of course, last week's car numbers were such a balls-up. Like, everyone had their individual numbers out selected by the game, so it's kind of good for me to see everyone's preferred racing number again in a big mix of racing numbers on the board. Kel van der Berg representing car 23 in his mood, um, doing his, probably his, one of his fastest laps at the moment. Um, it does look like he's a bit down from where I look in the Delta circumstances. Dave Young on the other on, on the other hand driving for Dave and Dragon. Um, again, the, the his partner in crime is Drake, also in a Mercedes Benz. He's a bit up on his time. We did lose a bit on Delta going through the S's over there. So let's see where that ends up eventually. And my camera picks it up. We've got C Tlau here in car 12 with his beautiful PWSR delivery there, um, looking mighty fine. And I'm probably going to cough a lot this evening, so please just bear with me. Corne Strauss, GPX Racing in oh, what I would probably say is one of those lovely golf Porsche liveries. I, I do admit, um, as old as that livery design is, it's just one hell of a stunning looking car. Um, irrespective of the age of that livery. Just one of those classics that you just cannot get away from. So as the boys are setting up their lap times at the present moment, we've got P. Dupria in his Honda driving for inappropriate racing. Uh, currently in first by doing a 134.1. So that's phenomenally quick in the AM class. Again, these boys have still got another 5 minutes, 40 seconds to do what they need to do. Um, now, Dupria has slowed down quite a bit. So has Wilson in the Aston Martin. And I reckon 
I think from a favorite point of view, I do love the Aston Martin on this track. However, I do not um, like this track. So if, if I had to be a gambler driving on this track, I would probably take out the Aston Martin um, as my banking car for, for a race on here. Um, I, I cannot think of any other car that's far better than an Aston for me. I, again, you boys on the stream, let me know what you reckon is, is probably the better car to use. Um, again, some of the individuals in, in general are not here tonight. I think, let me, let me just do a count. Um, we've still got 29 drivers this evening. So again, um, apparently there's quite a bit of load shedding in South Africa. And I do feel absolutely dreaded. To, to know that there are certain individuals affected by no, having no power to sim race. I mean, that's detrimental. Someone needs to go kick the government in the, there we go. Because that is just not called for. We Holzhausen there in Team Luxury Time Racing. Now again, this is one of those new developing teams within the sim racing community. Um, in all fairness, they, they've been growing since they've started their adventure. And as I've said it before, I love that livery that they've made over there. Um, it's just, it, it's not an eye-catching color for me, but it's just so astonishingly beautiful. Like the, 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 the striping colors on it, followed by the different types of tone that they've used is just phenomenal. Um, so again, these boys are new to the sim racing team adventure ship, and of course they, oh, they gave me some some good insider information that if you are wanting to join their team, then I would probably suggest you go and hook up with uh, Flip Fun Sale or maybe Brandon Holzhausen. Um, they are phenomenally good. They love sim racing and they want to continue doing that, but simultaneously building up a benchmark team within Sub-Saharan Africa or South Africa. So keep an eye out for them. Um, I reckon these boys are certainly going to make their mark in the team community of racing. So a uh, big shout out to them. He's currently in third place. Uh, P. Dupria is still the man to beat. W. Robson, on the other hand, and his Honda has made a move there in second place. Still two minutes to go. Now, of course, he smashed a good 134.4 there. That is, however, about five tenths slower than Dupria, which I reckon at this state, the way he's going, is a potential undercover alien there. Um, but not not a great lap for him Wilson on the other hand based on Delta is up by five tens now if he does manage to pull this off he will position himself in second place it all depends on what he does in the final corner looks quite smooth picks up the throttle there right exit that is it second place for Wilson looking fantastically fine there Dave Young on the other hand he's on a Big upper there, he's up by about seven tenths at this moment. Now, of course, that's not gonna bring him into the pole position stage, but that's certainly gonna get him up into the top five positions if he keeps it up. No, nope. loses a bit of time by exiting that corner. Uh, not detrimental though, but puts him in sixth place. I reckon he would have gotten at least in the top five if he just managed to handle it properly in the final corner. Lee Bullion on the other end, also up on his time. So he's got a bit of a iffy, iffy Porsche there that just doesn't like it. But a great exit from him. He picks up a whole three tenths out of that final corner. Where is this going to place him? Lee Bullion in eighth position. That is a phenomenal jump from him. Um, the man is on the move for sure. Now I reckon he's going to go to the pits. Currently decides not to continue on. I think that was a big lap by him. Um, who else is on the move here? Yeah, R. Dupria. Let's see if we can find him. A man I haven't really speaked of. He's from Mixed Emotions Team. Again, team versus team boys. I'll give you a heads up of what that consists. 
at the present stage, but what we kind of have for this series is a Pro and Amp class individual racing. Um, but then again, the total tally of the team scores will define the team champion. Now we're not going to do individual championships this season um, because it's all about how people connect with one another, how they drive as a team and that team championship is going to make or break it. So it's all about trying to develop how team racing is in South Africa, how that has been evolving over the last couple of uh, years or so. And again, we, we all know it's various types of communities that are involved with different racing. And of course, there's lots of individual names out there. The PWSR boys are there for sure. Um, of course, so are the other ones. I don't want to discredit any, any other ones. Again, another driver here from Team Luxury Racing. Like I said, these boys are certainly on the mark. Uh, I reckon they're doing their final laps now as we go to find sale um, who, who this evening I'm just going to call the team captain for luxury time racing so let's go let's go have a look at how the dynamics of the teams are this season so the teams in general this is them all 1 to 21 all of them individually everyone across the boards of course mostly South African sim racers um, but then again, we've got a couple of few international boys that's all also there lurking around the clock. Um, again, logistical nightmares is pretty much South African, but we do venture into the international market because, again, who, who doesn't love sim racing? Like, seriously. Um, again, who, who else is on the chat here? Um, Galen is here. Galen, hopefully the boys will give me good racing this evening. Again, yes, I do hope so. Um, I'm still nervous though. Like, I, I cannot express how nervous I am for Alton Point. 29 boys on the grid. Um, I expect catastrophic chaos all over the show, but I think the boys are going to show me quite the opposite, yeah? Um, so, let's see how that goes. Duncan Hutchkins, A Man, JJ McClure, um, M3 Supercharge. like let's see the decks are on it inverters are coming okay so jj is ordering some inverters for south africa yeah no it, it seems like that that's the ultimate way to go i don't know what solar panel and things are are at cost these days um, i think these days people tend to rely on inverters and batteries to keep their household supercharged for like a day or so so again yeah, let's see scatter is on there or skype or um shoot or whatever hello how are you the the alien demon itself okay so these are the teams i've now said hello to everyone let's just get that back onto the sim racing side this is where the boys are actually kind of start putting up some lap time fastest pole winner pole position at this moment is b degree in a 33.4 in the amp class we're going to see which one of the pro class boys can out qualify them. Now, of course, they aren't pro class boys just because they think they're fast. They are pro class boys because I know they are fast. Um, expecting some well known names to be up there. There goes Fancel, starts breaking the back there in the middle. Certainly saw a knee, Mr. Bullion there. Uh, Gotta find these boys. Ooh, there we go, up the spot. Nell Bullion there driving for Beefaroni Billions. Son of Lee Bullion. Being fancy there, he's chasing down. That looks to be like Van Sale there down the track. So currently a 133A. Dupree still stands up there. Barrington Smith also in the mix here for his Porsche. Driving for Cocker Panther Paul Racing. So PPPR. Um, again, if, if that is the abbreviation, I'm just going to go and use it. He's in the mix by 7th precise. Neil Bullion making a big mistake over there. Paul Fenter in his Bentley. Um, of course, the Alenar Express boy there. And it's not just because he expresses things all over the show. He loves his banana. 
and he drives expressively fast. Okay, so, ah, so much to say, these boys need to be on it. I need to see where the times are making. So Paul currently, not bad, up on his time. It's still going to bring him in the low 33s at this moment. We'll bunch him up a couple of spots up there. I'm still reckoning there's a few boys here that need to be up there that I'm just not seeing. Oh, and there, it caught my eye. Mr. Brooker. Welcome. Brooker in his Porsche. Team FYP. Now, I think it's the first time that he's racing here with us. So it's going to be quite entertaining to see how this develops. Um, Brooker, big thanks to you for joining us here at LNR. Uh, for those that don't know him, go search him on YouTube. He does some of his streaming there as well. So if you do get bored with my voice, you can probably get across to him. Uh, give it a like and a subscribe as well. Again, we're all sim racers, so we got to share the love to get it up there. Neil Greening, on the other hand, is the man on the move at this present stage. Looking at him at the moment, he's up by six tenths, coming out of the corner there. Now it's all about how does he enter and exit through the chicane here, which is very, very tricky. That looked very smooth, though. Oh, smooth operator is what I'm going with. That is probably the most beautiful exit I've ever seen. It didn't even go over the curbs, missed it completely. And I can guarantee you, he just climbed his delta up there by at least a second. So again, he's not up there in the top five mark at the moment, but he is certainly gonna make a mark there if he continues where he is at this moment. So I'm gonna keep an eye on him. Uh, leader of the pack at the moment is Sean Stratum and he's as uh, in his Honda there smashing a 32.7 so that is very quick there we go Neil Greening still up on his Delta looks good I reckon this is a good top 50 where does he position himself oh top 10 great great run there so let's go front of the pack who have I not seen yet Wellington Smith is there um, where is my favorite individual? Alan Patterson really struggling this evening. Just not getting it done and dusted. I'm, he's going to get very frustrated. 22 is not the position I would expect this man to be at. So I really hope he can get it all together. There's only like three minutes left. That's probably another two laps if he can get it in. Um, so expecting big things from Mr. Patterson. S. Loreiro here, a man that did a phenomenal race last week from Team Luxury Time Racing. He's up in the mix there in third, but he's going to head into the pit. Sean Stratum is slightly up on his delta, and of course we are in the first sector of the race track itself. So I don't believe... I'll, I'll keep an eye on where that goes though and see what they're doing. Mr. Hall here, D. Hall. Um, wow, lovely BMW there. Driving for Sarko. So we've got boys from Sarko as well. Those individuals that do not know Sarko PTY Limited. Mr. D. Hall is the, uh, uh, again, correct me, he, he can probably slap me afterwards, but to my knowledge, he is the founder of Sarko Community, a sim racing community in South Africa. Again, they have some console boys that drive with us at LNR as well. Um, and again, without their support, I don't think we would have ever kicked off our console racing side of it. Again, it's so good to see him here. Again, I know he's quick, so I'm reckoning he's going to be up there at least in the top 10 spots. Yeah, still finding his groove though. Dillard D. Hall, Bogham. Um, again, personal thanks from me to you and your community for everything that you have done thus far till date you boys are phenomenally awesome um it's let's hope this is a good and adventurous race for you mr drake at the moment uh looks like he's a bit up on his time by about half a second uh looking quite good that's it's all about momentum now going through the final sector here and i think the trickiest portion is yet to come going through this double apex corner down the straight, which is the wobbliest straight I've ever seen. Drake still up on his time, final corner here. Can he get it 
through the mark yes it seems like he didn't lose a lot of time so that's gonna bring him up a couple of spots oh puts him in second that's a fabulous drive there by him I love having a longer qualifying session. It's just gives me a bit of time to actually focus on what these boys are doing for, for the first time in my life. Rooker, on the other hand, final sector, he's up 7 tenths. And it's going to bring him down into the 34s marks. Not top 15, I reckon, but definitely up there. Oh, no, I've been proven wrong. Top 14. Again, my calculations and my map is just all over the show this evening. See W. Van Royen over there. That is an individual that did not listen. I did, I did, I did. There you go, that's much better. Ah. Sorry, had to do a bit of administration there. Um, race condition, race condition. So, where am I at? I am, I am very nervous. This is kind of what I'm going with. Um, have I ever been this nervous? Yes, I have. Uh, what do we expect? I'm gonna go with a. A great race I, I'm really gonna be optimistic this evening and I'm gonna go with this is gonna be just one of those phenomenal races um, ever to be seen on track so look at this from a grid point of view Ooh, the trees are in my way come now trees just get out of it in in general see if I can do a bit of a different viewing point. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I would call a 30 car track at Alton from back to front. These are the individual cars that are gonna race this evening. I wish them the absolute best um, and again so many beautiful liveries out there I just got to try and showcase this as best as I can every race that does start um, and that does happen and occur I do try and filter through the pack from start to finish a couple of Bentleys there a few BMWs boot bikes Honda 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 I, I reckon this is just a brilliant brilliant start for our round three race scenario four seconds on the clock this is gonna be tough extremely tough conditions let's let's see we who, who, who we got in the tech so B techs are definitely on it Alan just making it into the top ten yes I probably must that where is my Alan 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 Patterson in seven 
not not bad. I, I reckon that's very very good for Allen considering where he was prior to um, actually getting that position. I reckon if he was a bit more um, on point, and I think he was maybe a bit off this evening, struggled a bit. The, the guy that surprised me though is Dupree here in the Honda. He's starting in third place. Now he's got quite a bit of gap between himself and then of course Holtzhausen here in the BMW. So arm classes are fairly spread up. Uh, the the gentleman I do worry about is Mr. D. Hall here from Sarko. Um, probably not in the position he would have wanted to be, but he has got a pack of AM class ahead of him, so I do hope he gets a great race from his point of view. Brooker, new driver on track. Um, let me just go and get oops, all these deltas in. There we go, deltas we can all see. Okay, this is where the boys get to now. Now I've got a bit of streaming finesse, is what I would call it. The, the finesse of streaming. Um, and showcase you boys some Delta so if you see something I do not see then at least we can all go and have a look at some good great racing expectations I reckon because it's alter and track at the moment um, where you start is where you're going to finish unless you make a catastrophic mistake or any mistake whatsoever and spin off go off the grass or into the grass you know or if you want to cut some grass here and there um, purely because you missed your Saturday Sunday session of um, doing your tidy work at home uh, this is where it's gonna get quite eventful I honestly honestly hope that our team can manage it this evening because I reckon it's just gonna be very very eventful um, in all fairness so green light there we go race start conditions i am going to keep an eye out on the boys in front as they are going to go side by side through the first corner can they make it through looks good for me at the moment don't see any flags of yellows up all over the show it looks quite intense these boys are certainly on point and i'm loving what i'm seeing at this stage look at that all the way through to car 12 clear track clear moves uh, again my delta and telemetries will pick it up the boys are racing that is for sure just look at the back how close it is in all fairness straight on there being chased down by drake which makes it quite eventful no one really getting away that far honda is on the move though I reckon that Honda tire is very, very warm at this moment. Got a lot of grip where it supersedes the Mercedes. Just check at the track there. Like, it's just miles and miles of cars as they come through. Clinging down Brooker. He is now being chased down by Hall. So Hall has made quite a bit of a gap up from where he started. Brooker did go down four positions, but all made up four positions so now we've got a battle here for a pro class championship Brooker versus Hall two of our new drivers here as Dylan Hall goes on the inside Porsche does not go defensive decides to keep it clean it's all about the long-term race here at Alton Park let it just settle down Make your moves when it needs to make again. Great move there by Dylan Hall. Great experience shown there by Brooker. Um, again, that is just phenomenal, what I would call class racing kind of scenario. Again, let's see where it sits in the front. Paul Fenton making his way up to the front. Now, he has made a move on to Priya, but that is not for his class position has got a couple other Porsches behind him and it's all about smart racing is, is what I would call for I, I don't think he needs to get involved in between these pro class lines but he is cautiously aware because Holtzhausen here from Team Luxury Racing uh, is certainly trying to catch him 
currently as it stands second in class so that is a podium finish and right behind him he's got anthony wilson in his rear view mirror and it's phenomenally close by these boys itself just look at that bm making its move through alton I, I can't remember actually driving the BMW through this track, so I don't know what it feels or does, whatever. Just look at that hums and curbs on Alton. Again, racing standards this evening, and this is just me having a quick peek at the incident reports is what I would call phenomenal class racing. I was so nervous thinking that this is going to be a detrimental race one that we will forget for cotton or just lose track of because it was that awful thus far these boys are really really bringing their a game into it and i'm gonna put my hat down to them and personally just give them a big thanks there man this is this is what we want to see greening in his aston to go there for a bit of a cough. Patterson, what, what happened to my man Patterson? Patterson not looking very happy at this moment. I, I do not see what has happened. He has lost about five positions from where he started off. Patterson not really looking comfortable at this stage. Um, don't know what has happened. I, I can grab a big car number 10. I cannot, oh, I can see that he was in a bit of a fumble between himself and car 11. Uh, is it car 11? No, himself and car 118. So him and Fonsell had to probably make a bit of contact. I don't know whether that's a racing contact or whatever has occurred, a touch here or there, uh, but these two boys are now certainly racing full position. So that is LTR. Yes, I'm gonna call them LTR. Luxury time versus BWSR battling here for, ooh, as Pansail makes a big mistake into the wall there. Now that is gonna cost him dearly. Um, I don't know if that was just a momentary lapse between him and the guy in front of him or just made a, a different dive to avoid a collision. Nonetheless, BWS are here. Mr. Alan Patterson is right on the heels there of Jay Neville, who is in the Amplar. So again, these boys do not need to really battle. Well, Alan Patterson goes to look on the inside. I reckon he's got it within him to make the move stick. He's just got to get into the groove. Focus of where to take the Porsche on. He certainly has a way better exit there coming out of that corner. Porsche goes a bit defensive there. Alan goes very wide on the outer side. Is the Porsche going to make... No. Porsche wanted to. And then Alan just goes sneakily behind him makes the move stick and as Neville loses two to three positions there yes he's going to be challenged there by the BMW that, that is what you call a, a, a defensive driving not really really needed Robson from Fieren also in the mix there they are now all over the back of Neville and we've got Mayberg there in the mix too so BMW versus McLaren versus a Porsche. Let's go back to the front of the grid again. Uh, Loreno and Bennington Smith here. I, I reckon this is the team leading car for L LTR. I've got too many screens to watch. Like literally way too many screens. Where is my boys on chat? Hey, JJ going, go Alan. Uh, Galen going, looking good though. Lads, yes, I, I would I would give it a double thumbs up there, Galen. These boys are certainly bringing up their A-game racing. Um, I, I think I'm going to slaughter like them next week if they don't continue this trend because this is 
eight class racing. Like the start of the race was just phenomenal. A couple of hiccups here and there, but nonetheless, it, it is where it sits at the moment. Ah, there we go. Now, now I can control everything again. Oh, welcome back into that bus. Uh, Dupria there, out of the mix there. Don't know what happened. He is off track, spun it out. He is gonna fall way, way back. Now that makes Holzhausen the leading AM class car at the moment, who's being chased now by Wilson. Now this is gonna make it tough for Greening and Patterson, who is in the pro class, also gonna battle it out. Now you've got the two leading arm class boys here fighting it out for position. And then right behind them, two of the pro class boys, some of the best drivers we have in sim racing, it's going to battle it out too. So the question stands is how, how, do you, how do you want that to unfold? Not necessarily put your nose into an existing battle. Well, I wouldn't. But again, some individuals would feel that that is the, the better option to do what needs to be done. Um, there is more of my favorite boys everywhere on the track. Plow here in the mix, teammate of PWSR. Um, he is certainly looking quite racy this evening. Um, again, he is on his own, but he's sandwiched between a pack of, but I would say, pro class boys right behind him. That is Gerard Janssen van Vieren in his McLaren car AT. Drives all over the show. Good to see him back on Tuesday night sim racing. Um, he is with Lambrol Racing Team. I need to go find his teammate. I somehow believe his teammate um, would be Van Royen or someone. I, I don't know actually. Ooh, team hybrid racing ah goes into the pits and nearly murders himself completely and uh, that's just a bad pit entry very very unjudgy but also off the mark as as i might admit um not 100 percent sure what has occurred there but again pit box is not open track conditions is nine degrees this evening so it's a bit dark at the present moment let's go back Bit of wing action there. Ooh. Forecasting the logistical nightmare. Rear view fin bumper sticker there. Well, I gotta admit, all I wanted to do is just to see how close Paul Fenter is on Drake. Now, this is Bentley on Mercedes action. Somehow, Paul Fenter seems to be having a phenomenal drive there. Because I think this is probably the highest he's been thus far this season. So he is certainly having a great race. So is Mr. Bullion here yeah, in the Ferrari Williams team. Currently in fourth. And he has not had an adventurous round one, round two race. I know he's got the speed. He can do what needs to be done. But this is a completely new car for him. Loreiro here in team LTR or Luxury Time Racing. Having a phenomenal drive on his end. Of course, far better at the moment than um, I believe Fancel had. Fancel went straight into the wall there not so long ago, which practically murdered his whole race. Back to the AM boys, where, where the big battles are at this moment. 7th and 10th are very close, that's right. Hey, Redef! Welcome on stream, Kieran Patterson is also there, screaming for let's go PWSR. Yeah, PWSR is doing well, as you can see, that, that certainly looks to me like Alan Patterson has made his way through. But traffic there, now how he did that, I, I just don't know. I 
completely missed that off the market. Like two laps ago, Alan Patterson was sitting behind greening there in car 25. The man in the Aston Martin, this individual here, and now somehow he has managed to find a way past a, a double Aston Martin bounce. I would call it a hop, skip and jump, and he's now chasing down uh, Ryan Bennington Smith. So a bit of work for him to do has made a couple of positions up. I still don't know what happened to him at the beginning of the race. He did qualify in seven, so got a bit of work to get back into that. Oh uh, well, he is technically 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 speaking, he is where he is from where he qualified uh, in, in, in race position. So seventh is good, and uh, he's going up for sure. Clow, on the other hand, um, also moving up spots as I can see. Now he's in big battles here in the present state. We've got, of course, from Fieren, Hall, Clow, and then of course Brooker. We've got like one poor Amboy. Uh, surrounded by plenty of, of pro class boys and again um, he is trying to stay ahead of that horse behind him because right there is Dupria who is going to want to challenge for position there so the clown has got a bit of work to do in the AM class he doesn't really need to get involved in that horse fight but I reckon he's most best to stay with these boys and making a good race out of it so great racing thus far for the team itself but even everyone in class Dylan Hall from Sarko making plenty of moves this evening um, he is most certainly more a, a man of a racing standards than, than qualifying for, for some other weird reason it just didn't seem like he got it into the group when it was qualifying session but when it came to race uh, that that's a game class and i have to admit love the colors love the white rooms um again i'm a big fan of white rooms i like it feels like for, for some of the weird reason tonight i'm just walking way more than what i used to uh, let's go back onto back onto the chat box man where is my boys on chat box show jj i'm gonna throw that muscle in there hey guy gavin screwed in here then keeps crashing some out got it oh gavin i am so sorry for you man um thanks for popping in the stream though i did have you at some other point but thanks for coming in the stream and saying hi at least i know what has happened unusual that you had a bit of issues with the game crash oh as d hall makes a big mistake there he's gonna get passed by two individuals that is two boys making a move, two positions lost, uh, technically one in pro class, uh, pro class itself. So Hall made a tiny error as he makes another one. Ah, it's just mistake after mistake after mistake. And again, that, that, that is probably not his fault at all. It's just, it's just how it evolves. Go back to the leading AM class boys. So I reckon tonight the AM boys are certainly on the mixture. Like they they are keeping it well entertained. Holtzhausen for Team Luxury Time Racing versus Anthony Wilson there for Eleanor TVT uh, Wilson is, is is certainly giving the battles some stick. Of course they have greening there right behind him. He tends to stay out of trouble at this moment. It doesn't seem like he is challenging four positions too fast. Uh, even though he is stuck between a couple of AM boys. Dave Young there in car 129. Teammate of C Drake who's currently in second place at the moment. He is being chased down there by Neville in the Porsche and then of course Robson in the Honda Van Royen in the pits uh, not 100% sure of what is happening there all off the track again
that BMW a bit stuck in the kitty litter as you see as he struggles to get out of that sandbox. And that is not what he would have wanted from a racing point of view though. As we go back to the boys in AM class, battling it out. Now, Holtzhausen seemingly has made a bit of a gap between himself and Wilson. Wilson trying to keep up momentum on the track. I reckon the pit box will potentially open in the next 10 minutes or so. Ooh, there's a big boys there in on track at the moment. Where is that haunted? That is Scruton. Which I kind of feel confused. Scruton, I'm fairly sure you said you're not racing. Scruton's back in the mix. He is racing again. So the man that was out of the race has certainly climbed back into it. Love the team the name. Team Try Hard Racing. That is it, man. I, I, you know what? Uh, big thumbs up from my end to you. Never give up is the best mental approach that you can get. Let's just go racing and have fun. Um, you are going to struggle though because you're quite a bit of laps off everyone else. So, as busy as this track is, you, you certainly have a hard time getting a bit of momentum because you've got a ton of boys all over you like everyone there is everywhere um, that is Dave Young and them trying to falter their way through back there that's Neville he's gonna make them move on the inside and of course we have Jay Robson there who's also gonna get past hopefully Scruton will get a bit of breathing time Ooh, has made that big accident that somehow looks like Wilson. Is that Wilson? <gasps> that is Anthony Wilson, the man that was in second place, has now tumbled it into that corner. I, I need to go and have a look and see what has happened there. This, this is an oppor the main opportunity. Um, you see, Wilson somehow had a big fumble there. Let's go back. And I get to that. Yes. So that is Anthony Wilson coming through that corner. Of course, oh, he and New Greening, big thumble contact between them. I don't know if that is a misjudge point from Anthony, but he definitely made contact there with Greening on the rear end. So both of them will lose plenty of positions over there. Not 100% sure what has happened. Where are we from a racing standpoint? Greening is now in 30th. Now, from a class standpoint of view, that is not a lot big class for Greening. So, I think Greening still technically is classified in P8 from the Pro Class Series. Anthony Wilson, on the other hand, is the biggest loser at the moment. And I say that with kindness. I don't, I'm not saying that as a bad thing. It sounds so terrible when you say that. I need to find another methodology of, of pronouncing um, but he has lost quite a lot of places that now changes everything in the mix now Holtzhausen still in first for the AM class boys uh, all he's got to do is bring it home not make any mistakes and this is his victory in all fairness he's got a bit of a delta gap between himself and Dave Young Dave Young on the other hand has been challenged all over the place so it's he neville robson and then of course wilson will get into that mix that is for sure the 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 track has spread out a bit so let me give you a bit of a bit of a uh, idea of where we stand on track conditions so uh, everyone has widened themselves far so a bit of only a few uh, individuals are actually racing one another uh, as you will humbly note there a uh, leader is far far away at the present moment you can see there in the triangular uh, representation that, that Sean Stradom has got himself a 12 second gap between him and the leader of course Paul Fenter here currently in third position in the pro class is trying to 
put the handle onto the Merc ahead of him, which seemingly seems to be going very well. I reckon it's all going to go down to who gets the better quick stop in and out if they still manage to maintain these track race conditions. Now again, from a, a track point of view, everyone's kind of in the 34s at the moment. So even up until 12th place, these boys are running mid 34s in racing standard. Um, only from position 12 onwards, you see a bit of a gap creating where we see a bit of 35s and a few 36s here and there. Nothing too detrimental. Sean Strader, on the other hand, leader of the race, he has smashed it with a 133.3 as the best time. So he is certainly on the move. I do hope he's got enough fuel in his car the way he carries on there. Like, that is just mad quick. Mad, mad, mad quick. Traffic here and there. Penalties being dished out. Our stewarding team is on the move. Again, far better racing standards than what it was in race one, race two. Nope. Getting in everyone's way. I, I would have guessed so, Scrooge. Um, again, that's down for you going out and trying again to, to do it. But I was kind of seeing that you were in, in everyone's um, head. Well, you were pretty much blue flagged all over the show. And I commend you for, for giving it a go, man. You, you literally went, you, you did well. Like, seriously. Uh, so maybe next time, man. Don't know what it was. Hopefully we can figure out what it was for you getting all those little spiky thingies. Um, hope it's not the server itself, but you can certainly go and have a look at it. Pit window open. Boys in the pit box instantaneously. You can sort of see everyone just going wildly into it. Cloud, mm. yeah, PWSR. Making moves and momentums. Of course, he's got a lot of work still to do, but he is on the rear end there of Mayberg, who is also part of Team Try Race Hard. Again, I, I would reckon that is the teammate of Scruton. Scruton, I, I hope so. Um, let's see. Reckon going slowly. Yeah, trying again. Yeah, Kieran reckons the same thing. So again, I, I believe this is your teammate, Scruton. He is doing well, 13th place at the moment. Still a great level in there. I, I really want to know how you boys do it, because I do love that, that lines that you've put on the car, even on the McLaren. That lines on the McLaren is exponentially sexy um, in all fairness so I gotta I gotta commend you boys for bringing up such a gorgeous livery in, in itself there's just something about liveries and lines on a car that I love but then I, I think if, if I had to I every race I see and every time I look at all the liveries that the boys have brought this season there is really they, they all stand out to me like I, I cannot pick a favorite. I, I can tell you the ones I do love. So the PWSR livery, I certainly do love. Um, it's just one of those that, that definitely stands out. The, the boys from Team Luxury Time Racing, their BMW liveries is, is a, an eye catcher for sure. Now you can't really see it here at night. Um, when it was earlier in the qualifying session, you could have seen the different colored cars on it. Um, and I think it's just fun exceptional. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then, of course, we've got um, Team Racing Hard, um, uh, which, which is now the Scruton Boys and so forth. That that orange line on their cars is, is just exceptionally gorgeous as well. Uh, I, I do, do love them. So those ones I like um, a lot. Um, and that's just, that's not even just my personal choice, I, I do love it. 
uh, and I'm not trying to be biased. I mean, I'm a big fan of our logistical nightmare livery races. Um, they, they, they are certainly out there, and probably most of them weren't designed by me, but they, I, we had some input in them. I do like the analog liveries as well, but I see the different types of liveries on screen that all the other individualized teams have done for this season and for this event. I, I really, really commend them. So season four, in my humble opinion, is just going to be ten times better. Um, if, or I hope to be ten times better than this season, as I always do. We always try and aim higher than what we did the previous season. Um, but this is certainly one, one of my favourite ones out there. And it's not because um, it's not because there's there's so many drivers. It's because there's so many exceptional drivers. These, these boys have gone in full steam, practiced hard. The, the driving class is phenomenal. Um, and of course, uh, uh, everyone races everywhere. So I've got to go out and commend the boys at other communities that is emphasized on clean racing. So I'm going to go and say big up some big thanks to the boys at at Sarko, the big thanks to the boys at Sonic Sim Racing, the guys at um, Race Face, the boys at um, Sim Race South Africa, the, the, the Monday Night Racing boys, uh, all those boys. Again, I'm probably the only community boy that, that will generally go and say big thanks to, to everyone out there that, that races and, and competes and, and, and wants to bring some racing. For, for me, it's the love of the game, the love of the sport. I absolutely love it, and and seeing this is, is what makes me exceptionally happy. And I, I and I hope we we, we do entertain you boys. So enough of me. Let's go back. Let me find some good action here. Boys have gone into the pit. Drake is certainly out there at the moment. So he is the leading individual that has stepped up and gone into the pits. I do not know um, what is the better option. Is it the undercut or overcut at Alton? So I would hope for individual experienced guys to tell me what, what's the better options. I think Drake has gone into the pits quite early. So that seems to be like an undercut scenario. Sean Stratum, on the other hand, is still out there. Now, he did have a big gap between himself and Drake, so I don't see that that will be any problem at all. Paul Fenter has had a bit of a loss there. Um, ooh, there's a big accident there by a few individuals. That is Lee and Kel van Abar. So, uh, the Porsche and the Mercedes somehow either came together or something has occurred, but... I can, I can certainly tell you that that Merc is not happy with itself as it, as it struggles to get back on track again. Trying to stay off the track, so again, big ups there to go for the bad, not causing more collisions than what he should. Um, Dylan Hall, however, is back in the mix again. Uh, he did have an exceptional first, I would say, 20 minutes of racing, and now he's trying to fight his way back, so he's got a big, big margin to try and pull back in the last couple of minutes uh, a Brooker is in the pit I'd love to see where he feeds out so is Robson so is Greening um, Stradom on the other hand decides to still stay out he's got about four minutes left on the clock before that pit window closes so he is trying to extend it as far as he can um, to get the best out of what he has started. Now, of course, this man started uh, ahead of everyone, pole position for him, and he looks to potentially win this again. Uh, Dave Young, on the other hand, seems to be the leading AM class driver going into the pits. Um, is Neville going in as well? Yes. Neville is in the pit, so all the boys at the bottom are now all filtering into the pit lane. They are the last remaining boys that still need to do a pit stop. Gaps still everywhere. Um, as this battle still continues, like a new greening Wilson battle 
is still ongoing. The only exception at this stage is that Greening is now ahead of Wilson. So these two did come together, made contact, and I would guess the five second penalty there for For that man. Now I need to go back from a racing standpoint of view. Um, I'm sort of looking for an individual because not on the race. So 26 drivers left. We did start off with just below 30. A couple of individuals have left the benchmark there. Um, and I do need to go raise a flag for a few individuals that will get penalized uh, after the race because they are not here anymore. But that's a different story. Sean Strado in the pits, Paul Fenter and Drake. This battle has got a lot closer than what I would have expected to be. The last time I had an eye on it, uh, Drake was about two seconds ahead of Paul Fenter. Whether Drake made a tiny error, that's sort of where the question stands. Again, once you make a small error here, you are going to struggle. That is for sure. Just, just you lose the whole momentum thing. You miss your first breaking point, and then you need to work your way back up again to, to get that sorted. Neil Greening, on the other hand, is a game off track, so I don't know what is happening with that man, but he is certainly struggling. This battle continues now, it's getting closer and closer. Oh, love it how that lights go off. That looked like Dylan all there around on the outside, Dylan not having the best of races. Loreiro in the pits. So a couple of boys making a bit of mistakes here and there. Brooker, on the other hand, is also in his own battles here. Close contact racing between himself and Mayber ahead of him. Team FYP versus Try Hard Racing. I have to admit, I have not seen a lot of penalties being dished out though. In, in all fairness, one, two, three, four, five, five racing incidents. One, two, three, four, four penalties actually to start throughout the race. So I'm gonna give a big applause to everyone that joined this evening. Who, as Mayberg goes very deep there, outshot his brake marker. That puts Brooker on his heels. Because this is a battle that can potentially continue going forward. A position gain is far better than one lost. Glau going, oh, Mayberg going defensive, but then Mayberg, what, what has happened there? Did I miss something? Like Mayberg completely slowed down all the way and allowed Brooker and Dupree to pass. How and why, I am very, very uncertain at this moment. Um, as Loreto comes out of the pitch, now he was ahead of the pack. I am really not sure what has happened to this man, but he has lost so many positions since the start of the race. Um, where, where it stands at this moment is a 15 position drop from race start. Now that is exponential. Um, I'd really love to know what has happened to this individual from their point. P. Dupria, on the other hand, I mean, he was the man that qualified in third place overall. He is currently racing in 16th position for team in Ampro ra inappropriate racing. Oof, I struggle to say that name, even though I can actually say that for inappropriate racing. I should just say it like it is. Um, So, 
I had to take a sip there for my drink. Sometimes I do not realize that how thirsty I can actually get while commentating. So, oh, as Neville goes a bit wide into the grassy you knoll, now it's getting very, very dark at the moment, as you can see. So, let's just look at it from a standing point. I'm going to go to the leader of the race, give you a bit of an interior look. Interior look, it just looks like he's he's got uh, seven bright lights on there, like four wheel drive lights shining all over the show, and you can practically see everything from every position. So well, maybe I'm misjudging it, maybe I'm not. Current battle at this stage here in one, two, three, I'm gonna go fifth, fifth and sixth position for the AM class. Um, is Mr. Robson in car 764 with, of course, PWSR boy there. So they are closely battling one another. Alan Patterson, now that I talk of it, is now in sixth place. So he has gained a couple of spots. On stream. Um, everyone going happy birthday, good racing, happy birthday, thank you for the birthday wishes, Oscar, um, thank you, Skitter, and it's on my birthday too, yes, ah, what, what, what can we say, man, love, love some racing, okay, so, ba -ba 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 -ba. that's it, mate, for some reason, weirdly enough, I like, Tonight I'm very, very talkative. I, I don't know why though. Like, it's probably because my nerves are really settling. So I've got to give everyone, like, th those who haven't been on the stream since the start of the race, um, like, I, I cannot express how, how nervous I, uh, I was this evening, even, even before the race started. I think, I think I've made it very vocally verbal to the boys on uh, at the driver's briefing. I, I was so worried that we, we picked one of those tracks that would have just gone horribly wrong from a racing point of view. Um, now, why I, for some other weird reason, doubted that these boys on track will not bring an A-class racing, I, I just do not know. Alan going for B5. Thanks for the heads up. I'm definitely going to go have a look at that one. Thank you for that, JJ. Loving it, man. Alan on B5. He is challenging the Porsche out of him. That's Ryan Bennington Smith, uh, a known racer who goes very, very wide into that corner. Now, I, I'm assuming that he potentially thought that Alan was going to go and stick it on the inside there. Therefore, he gave him a bit of room and space. Now, in all fairness, it is going to be tough for that BMW make a passing move on the Porsche um, and it's not just uh, about pure straight line speed it's just because that Porsche out of a corner somehow has a magic turbo boost that just makes him like like gain margins of a position uh, across him so so this is all about smart racing Figure out where the weakness is of the opponent ahead of you. And I probably have to say that this is not going to be easy though. Um, these boys are very well known to each other. I don't believe that they've ever been in this position whereby they are battling for a position. So first time for everything. But I reckon this is not going to be easy for Alan to, to make a move. 
And again, I don't think it's going to happen within like a blink of an eye. He's going to have to set it up. He's going to need to figure out where is the weak spot of that Porsche. And, and simultaneously just be zone focused on, on where to capitalize when that mistake does occur. Now, having said that, um, I don't think Barrington Smith is a man that makes mistakes as we look on the rear end of the wing in that Logitech livery. To see how that Porsche gets away out of the corner instantaneously creates a bit of a gap between him and the Porsche. And I'm fairly certain if I go to Allen, give a look at the driver. No, that's not what I wanted. No, so I'm gonna have to go driver. See how hard he is working. He gets so close in the final few corners to that Porsche. Just somehow cannot make it stick. Does look like a good exit. Can he capitalize on that? Certainly a good exit there by the BMW. Does the Porsche go defensive? Yes, it does. Porsche sticks it on the inside. Now, if he can make it go wide and then get the speed he needs, Alan flashing furiously goes like, give me the space. I want the space. Trying to offset the man ahead of him. Oh, this is a battle for sure. Aggressive impact every angle. That BMW does look far more settled than the Ford. Does not mean that that Porsche is just going to give it away. As he gets closer. It's like in this section is where the Porsche seemingly gets away. Oh. That is a big mistake there by Paris. He is going to be compromised by speed. Does he go defensive? No, he goes on the outside. Ooh, wanted to stick it in. Oh, big mistake there by by Allen. Unfortunate two double whammies in a couple of corners. Porsche gave the inside line to Allen. Allen outbraked himself slightly and then went off the track seemingly recovered exceptionally well now he's got to make it up all over again now i'm certain that everyone on the stream screaming for pwsr is just holding their heads going like no oh that was so close so close great move man that that is what i call a setup move Excuse me. Uh, where was that? Yeah, so that was what I call like a set of movie. He, he, he made the man make an error, capitalized on the error, and, and just could not execute from his service. Now he's going to make it all up. So I'm going to see, I'll keep an eye on that to see how that develops further. Um, at the present state, we still have Greening here. He's catching our Dave Young currently in the second in his class as we have another Aston Martin off there in the corner I don't know who that was that's a Wilson again Wilson is stuck Wilson's got to wait until everyone passes him before he gets back on track that's just going to make him lose so much more time Wilson made a big big error there Brooker on the other hand he's got Wilfred Robson ahead of him. These two boys battling it out. Again, this is not for position though. Um, it's all about class racing and, and team championships is where we stand off with. But it's certainly a close race between those two drivers. Would, would you have a driver chat to you 
while commentating? Um, Archer, probably, yeah. Um, I honestly don't mind. I've actually never done that though. Um, 12 minutes of racing left. Um, I, I think that's something I probably need to bring into place. So, Archer, good question. Um, answer, yes. Uh, when? Uh, I don't know. I, if you're free next week, let's let's try and do something. So what I'll do is I can probably kick that off. Um, probably get into a commentating stream chat. I, I know we have a broadcasting channel in our Aronar Discord community, so we could probably hook up there and then I can get some guys to invite themselves. I don't think it's a bad idea. Love the thought. Love the idea. I'm going to put a pin in it and I think it's definitely something we need to explore as I look into the mix at the moment so a couple of boys making a bit of incident the bullion there in the wall I don't know what has happened to him but both him and Fon Sale is in the mix there and something definitely did happen I'm gonna go and have a look and see what I can find I just want to make sure that there's no real battles again this battle back again I'm not gonna go and look at the replay I always go and look for good battles. This is back in the mix again. Berry's Ryan Berrington Smith versus Alan Butterfield. These two boys have been at it for quite a while now. Tidy Earth. Apologies for that. I had to go and clear my throat again. Oh, as Alan goes way too much on the curb there, steps it out, car swindles in and around, gets back onto the track safely though. He has once again lost so much time to Ryan Berrington Smith. I reckon Ryan Berrington Smith is smiling and, and thanking that there is someone that's looking out after him this evening because he and Alan had so many battles in the last remaining minutes of this race. How is that even possible? Like he's a he's a survivor of note. Small tiny error cracking through. 23 racers on track at the moment. So we've had a few individuals leaving the server this evening and I don't know why or how or what has happened I, I really hope they are not doomed and gloomed because of racing incidents and conditions of racing I have to admit it does to me look seemingly like um, it's all self-inflicted pain again it's one of those tracks that I would gladly state that I um, do not do not want to race and any any given moment there's community sim racing out there where they pick Colton I, I do try and avoid it as, as much as I can um, it's a track that I don't like it's a track that doesn't like me but it is certainly a track that these 30 cars on today or, or this evening brought some great racing but um, in all fairness everyone brought their A game Kelvin Abar got a drive through penalty and now all of a sudden he has got a stop go 30 second penalty that means he was speeding in the pit lane so it's not going his way at the moment um, top 20 boys is all over the show to make sure that I actually feature everyone this evening. It's kind of hard to go through all the nitty gritties to make sure everyone is featured. I do like to try and give everyone as much screen time as possible. It's often not easy. Like, it's just not easy. Tonight was way more manageable for me, in, in all fairness. Um, in general terms, there is about a 40 car grid that does races, so it does get quite busy. 
Uh, I think with the current conditions in South Africa, based on load shedding and so forth, uh, a lot of individuals were affected by tonight's race. So I do humbly apologize for that. Um, certainly something we can't do anything on our end. Um, but I hope to see you back next week. Next week's going to be some good racing as well. Um, Again, I think next week, where, where are we off to next? Next week is going to be Silverstone followed by Kailami. And then we're going to close off the season at Masada. So the next two races is, is really going to be well suited for a big grid car race. Silverstone is especially the, the only concern I normally have with Silverstone is corner one. Or, I, or should we all call it is the Hamilton corner really because things can get very real there and then of course Maggot and Beckett is where it can get quite dicey um, but once everything is passed over there Silverstone is generally a good track I, one of my absolute time favorites so some, some people just don't like it because they reckon it's kind of too flat it's too boring it's too long I think it's a legendary track out of all been there for years as as is most of the, the old British tracks and some of the old ones like Spa and that, but again they, they, they're very nice. Um, battle going on at fifth again. Uh, not at this moment so I've probably missed it. JJ. Victory Donuts. Yeah, Victory Donuts is what it is. Okay. Where do I find one? So these two boys are fighting at the moment. They are closest in class battling it out. This is Dupria and Robson. Now Dupria has made his way back in positions. Uh, stuck it through. He's currently in third. Was first in class. He's going to have to settle for third this evening. But that is if he can keep Robson behind him. Currently chasing him down. So this is Honda on Honda action separate teams fighting for place and position then of course we have Brooker there again Brooker in the mix like Brooker's just all over the show this evening first time racing at logistical nightmares and I think I've seen him in in so many actual battles this evening that I, I, I love it absolutely love it um, even though it's not even for class racing of course, we've got Van Amarwe here, who I haven't featured. There we go. This is a man I haven't really talked about. He is Lamborghini. The only man in a Lamborghini here. Five minutes left of racing. He is now being challenged by Kel van der Berg and the Mercedes right behind him. Now, he is driving for LNR WTF, which I would guess it stands for uh, LNR Worship the Fungus. I, I hope it's not a cult. If it's a cult, let me know. Ooh, as he opens up the door there for Cal, Cal just sticks it on the inside. That is a brave move by that man in car 23, though. One position gained, however. Managed to make his way up. Harald Janssen from Fieden just caught my eye there. The man in 10th place with his McLaren. He is heavily in the mix here now getting some good action there now he is behind a BMW who has gone completely off track there uh, excursions of note is that Van Sale yes that is Van Sale Van Sale not having the best of races he, he was so competitive in the beginning of the race like he was at like a game deluxe um, and I think it's just gone south, is, is what I would go with. It's just not gone his way this evening. He, he made an incident trying to avoid Alan Patterson there when he was challenging for that position. Um, went off the road into the barrier and, and since then I've really, really struggled to, to get his momentum flowing. So I, I do hope he comes back strong next week for Team Luxury Racing. Again, these boys are on their move. Um, they, they, a new set of team willing to do more, um, grow and learn. 
simultaneously. So their aim is to enter multiple cars in most of the South African leagues and in future. So do keep an eye out for them. <coughs> I, I reckon give them a bit of time and they will certainly start making their mark count. Um, so expect good things from these boys. Uh, I, I reckon if you want to know anything, do not be shy and go, go reach out to Mr. Fancel there. Uh, he'll certainly help you and welcome you in their team. They are constantly looking for a new sim racing driver enthusiast willing to join a team for team racing. Paul Fenter, on the other hand, has dropped down into the post. What has happened to that man? He has gone all the way down. Not 100% sure what has happened in the last remaining minutes of the race. Now, for everyone behind him, they are gaining more and more positions. Nell Billion has lost a few. Bennington Smith is now in third place. So something must have happened in the last remaining minutes. Car 9 and Car 15 had an incident. So car 9 and Car 15 had an incident. 764 and 130 had an incident. So 130 like that, it's on the death of the race, a couple of incidents has now filtered its way through. Paul Fenton dropping down like a, a rock thrown in deep water all the way to the bottom. This is not what he would have had in mind. He was running so well in third place. That position has now been handed over to Bennington Smith, Allenton in fourth. Then we've got Greening in 6 from the Pro Class Championship and then Gerard in 7. So a lot has changed in the last few seconds of the race. Sean Stradom on the other hand, he's on the final lap of the race for him. He's slowed it down quite a bit now. Um, I reckon he's going to take it easy. The last few corners ahead of him is, I believe, Brooker. That seems to be Brooker, that's the guy in 11th position. I, I do think Strydon has practiced way too much. So for anyone on the stream, I think next time we, we're going to add a bit of ballast to this man um, so that he can stop winning races so much. Nonetheless, he's had a great race. This is Sean Strydon taking the victory off everyone led from the start to the finish in, in all fairness back into the pits that is a 24 second gap between himself and the guy in second place there mr drake oh again i i don't know what has happened but stradom is out he did finish the race though in first place. Drake there is technically in second position. Uh, Ryan Bennington Smith in third, which they now state is in second. Um, I think Sean Stradom lost connection in the final steps of the race. Um, again, so everything from a Delta point of view is now sort of updating. So Bennington Smith technically in third as far as I can see. Nell Bullion in fourth, followed by Alan Patterson coming through the final corners in fifth place. And then, of course, first in the AM class, B. Holzhausen for Team Luxury Time Racing. I mean, this is a good time for them. Great race by Holzhausen. Phenomenal drive from him. Stuck it through all the way. Just did an exceptional race greening there coming and crossing the line uh, second place podium there for uh, Dave Young who's, who's crawling back slowly oh did, did that man run out of juice that looked like a man that's got no fuel left he is crawling through is he gonna make it um, he has lost a position to Dupria Dupria has passed it through I don't know if Dave Young's gonna cross the start finish line. He is still rolling. He is still rolling. 
uh, this is how we end the race with Dave not finishing it at all. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Dave Young there cannot cross the start finishing line let's just go look at the timetable uh, race conditions as i've said john stratum takes the victory followed by drake followed by Bennington nail and then of course alan patterson from the am class we have holzhausen um of course taking the championship there in his class peter priya in second dave young uh, currently it says uh, third so I do hope he gets that. Uh, he hasn't yet crossed the finish line. Uh, Robson in fourth, Duprisis in fifth. Uh, that is, in all fairness, the end of the race. For everyone on the stream, your commentating, your support is well appreciated. I honestly love and appreciate that. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do hope you have a good evening. Tomorrow night we will be back for the console boys driving at Silverstone. This is their last race, uh, so don't be shy. Come in, pop in, say hi. Console ACC on Silverstone next week, same time, same place. We will be at Silverstone for the PC boys. This championship is not over yet until it's over. Catch you all next time. Thank you for your support. Good night. God bless. Goodbye. Till next time. Thank you.